on Ukraine. The best thing we can do this year is to help keep the Ukrainians in this fight. They're fighting so bravely, they're not going to lose for want of morale. Uh, the danger is we don't give them the support that they need. Are we and hearing any audio here? Who will chat? Um, listen to me. I, I have a feeling we're not hearing David Cameron saying perhaps United the most States atrocious thing others, we can imagine. Um, perhaps for Let me see. In, we're going to get the wheels going here. Russia's see if it's live, which I think it is. Destroyed. And if we hear David Cameron, and if we life, don't, this is an there will be no videos in being United played during States the stream. Security. Oh, you do hear? Um, so that's what Maybe I, I should would shut my say. Big mouth? On Ukraine, the best thing we can do this year is to help keep the You're Ukrainians... Gonna, we're going to play from the beginning. I'm going to let it play without me talking. On Ukraine, the best thing we can do this year is to help keep the Ukrainians in this fight. They're fighting so bravely, they're not going to lose for want of morale. Uh, the danger is we don't give them the support that they need. And I make that argument to anyone who will um, listen to me. I argue that it is uh, extremely good value for money for the United States and for others, um, perhaps for about 5 or 10% of your defense budget. Almost half of Russia's pre-war military equipment has been destroyed for, without the loss of a single uh, American life. This is an investment in United States security. Um, so that's what I would say. So I'm just going to close that now and uh, let everyone trickle in. For those of you who don't know where I am, I'm back behind the Iron Rainbow, as I've been humorously saying, in Ottawa, the capital of Canada, for a conference where I was uh, attending a panel this morning. It's called the Canada Strong and Free Network, CSFN. And it's sort of, uh, I asked how to describe it, sort of a, a conservative conference networking People come and talk about the issues of the day, and they've got think tanks and whatever. It's fun. And I was on a panel this morning with Jen, and I forget her last name, Tabarnish, but Michael Geist, a lawyer that I follow on Twitter. And um, I'll get into that in a second. I wanted to start with that video because Boris Johnson, or as he's more familiarly known, Bojo, was here yesterday, has said you know similar things when it comes to Ukrainian policy or policy of the war in Ukraine. David Cameron said that the other day. I saw the clip on the internet, and I said there has to be some broader context to that inhumane statement, that it's a good return on investment, sending young Ukrainian men and women to the slaughter without sending American soldiers to the slaughter, without really thinking it through what happens when there's no more Ukrainian men and women to send to the slaughter, but it's a good return on investment. Talking about how the policy of no diplomacy you know, supporting proxy wars at all costs at the blood of other people's children is a good investment for American policy. It is the most atrocious thing he can possibly say. And Boris Johnson has echoed a similar sentiment. Tim Scott, who uh, was running for president in the United States, now bailed out, but apparently is among the top VP selection choices candidates for Trump, said something similar during one of the debates. And I was like, this is inhumane to regard human life and to treat human life as a means to an end of your proxy war, that the the lubricant of the military war machine is run on the blood of young Ukrainians. And they frame it in all noble ways. Yes, they're fighting. They're not going to lose for, for lack of um, uh, morale. No, they're going to lose for lack of people. Because after you've done sending a generation of Ukrainians to the slaughter for your proxy war against Russia, and they're saying the quiet part out loud now, what then? Well, you got you got people like um, I don't want to say Blinken. I forget who it was. Oh no, it was Chuck Schumer, threatening that if we don't support Ukraine and they don't win, but they continue to get slaughtered and eventually there's no more Ukrainians. Well, then it might be your sons and daughters with boots on the ground in this proxy war, sacrificing human life to deplete an, a political rival of its military capacity, as if that's even what they're doing. But that's that's the strategy. Just keep sending people off so that they dilapidate and deplete their military capabilities. And you can win this proxy war against what some might feel to be a manufactured foe. So I was going to ask Boris Johnson that question if I ever got to him. He left yesterday. I was going to ask Pierre Poilier a similar question. Because bear in mind, you know, Slava Ukraini is a very popular thing for Canadian politicians, politicians across the world to say, setting aside the controversial history of that term. You know, the, the, the thing of the day is promoting, supporting endless war. And if you don't support the war, if you're not an outright war whore, then they call you a Putin apologist. So all that to say, we are at the CSFN. I participated in a panel this morning. 
and I feel very bad because I can't remember names. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm very bad with names. I said, Jen Gerson, Paul Taillon, and Michael Gerst. Dr. Michael Gerst, but he's not a doctor. He's a PhD of, I guess, law. I have been told it was among the more exciting of the panels that people had seen. It was fun. You know, there's a certain, <laughs> not a pretentiousness, but there's like, people will take me more seriously now that there's gonna be a picture of me sitting on a white bench, on a white leather couch with a microphone in my ear. They're gonna take me more seriously than if I'm crazy ranting and raving while walking the streets. Why is that context is everything? <laughs> you get up on stage and you make the exact same points in front of a crowd and that's intellectual. Make it while you're walking the streets of Ottawa during a protest, that's a crazy man <laughs> who needs to be locked up. So I'm here now, I'm gonna do a live stream and it's gonna be a little bit, not more hectic, more chaotic it's going to be more eclectic than usual. Because as I'm walking through here and I'm meeting people who know me better than I know them because they follow, you know, they know my entire life story. And their stories are very interesting as well. And I'm like, oh, I ran into an Iranian national who was just uh, arrested, who was out there protesting in front of uh, Hamas and, you know, supporters of, <sighs> he's out there protesting with a Canadian flag. He's the one getting arrested. I'm like, that's an interesting story. Can you come on and talk about it? I'm going to meet Ginny in a second, sitting right next to me, but you don't see her yet because everybody's got a very interesting story. Everybody uh, is out here with a not a specific mission in mind, but maybe a broader um, objective, which is restoring freedom, restoring individual rights. I don't want to use the word conservative, uh, just good common sense. And so there's going to be some people bouncing in and out for interviews. We're going to talk about Alex Jones and the recent whistleblower that has now basically revealed what we all knew or at least thought we knew. We didn't think it was the FBI or the CIA nudging this lawfare against Alex Jones. I, we all thought, you know, we went with the little, the, the, the more simple Occam's razor, Hillary Clinton. You participate in getting Trump elected. You unleash the war machine that is the Hillary Clinton war machine. But now there's a alleged undercover video of a guy spilling the beans. We'll get there. We'll talk a bit about Avenatti. We'll talk a bit about, I have the list out here, uh, but I wanted to start with that intro about David Cameron proudly saying out loud what many of us were criticized for saying was the case a year plus ago. They are using the blood of a generation of Ukrainian men and women to lubricate the war machine from which they all benefit immensely. All right, now I know I get to do one thing with my computer here um, because, it, ooh, hold on one second, did I do it? Hold on, people. Before I get in trouble, you know, give me a second. I think I forgot to do it today. View on YouTube. Okay, we're, did I check that we're live everywhere? I'll make sure we're live everywhere in a second. Hold on. Because Viva follows the rules, even if the rules are stupid. Yeah, I didn't click the box. Now I click the box. Boom. Now it's going to say this stream contains a paid promotion. Because it's going to contain not only one paid promotions, but two. Of course, when you have the sponsors that you like, it's a very easy job to do. I'm on the road. What do I always say is the hardest thing to do when you're on the road? Getting your fruits and vegetables. You might be saying it as a joke. Ooh, look at this. Welcome to my set is Canada. Continue. When you travel, it's very difficult to eat healthy. Many of you know, but many of you don't know, you're supposed to have five to seven servings of raw fruits and vegetables a day, and most people don't have them. I got here last night, didn't eat all day. I got a salad, it was delicious. But when you're traveling, it's not always easy to get your fruits and veggies. When you're at home, it's not always easy. Field of Greens is a desiccated fruit and vegetable. It is not um, an extract. It's not a supplement. Mix it up. One spoonful twice a day is one servings of raw fruits and vegetables or the equivalent. You get all the antioxidants. You get all the nutrients. It's delicious. It's great. And it will give you two servings of fruits and vegetables. For those of you who think French fries are a vegetable, they're not. Eat healthy. Exercise. Get your veggies. And even if you can't get your veggies, Substitute a bad habit with this good habit. Fieldofgreens.com. It'll bring you to Brickhouse Nutrition. Promo code VIVA will get you 15% off your first order. Uh, it's delicious. I like it. I use it. And uh, that's as good as it's going to get for me. So go to VIVA. Oh, no, it's uh, fieldofgreens.com. Promo code VIVA. 15% off your first order. It's delicious. Now, the link is in the, in the description as well. With that said, uh, and before we get into some other subject matter, because we have a guest who's been sitting here patiently looking at, watching me rant and rave and now read my sponsors. Um, I'll, full disclosure, I know about what I know about Ginny from the two minute discussion we had beforehand, where I said, hey, you wanna go and explain, stop, it sounds interesting, explain it to the world, let's do this, then Ginny's gonna leave, we're gonna talk about other stuff, and then you're gonna see guests bouncing in and out. 
but let me make sure here. So we're live on everywhere. Oh, look at this. Hold on, hold on. Okay, we're live. Where is Viva? I see him reload. Thumbs up. Yeah, no, I see me too. We're live on Rumble. Let me make sure that we're live on Viva Barnes Law. Datlocals.com. Refresh. Everything's looking good. And uh, that's it. Boom. We're live everywhere. Okay, people. Without further ado, I think I'm going to take the headphones off. I'm going to take the headphones off. I don't think I need these. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and now, people, I feel liberated a little bit. Oh. Hold on. Sorry? Yeah, well, I said, well it, it's, it, the headphones are like a, a natural bandana or an unnatural bandana. All right. Uh, Tech Man, how does it work? We're both in? Well, look at this. Hold on. I'm going to see this just to make sure the framing's good. Refresh over here. I love doing these. This is a lot easier than doing it live on the street, but at least I'm sitting down. But hold on. Okay, we're going to skip this. And we're going to skip this in five, four, three, two. And by the way, everyone, pay attention to what's going on in the background. It's, it's fun stuff. Uh, live. But hold on. I don't see I don't, I don't see Ginny. The world sees her? Oh, you're going to Okay, fine. So... All right. I'll, I'll get used to this one day, people. But the live stuff on 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 location is always a little uh, trickier. First guest, I know nothing about Ginny except she started talking and explaining what she was doing, and I said it sounds interesting. Ginny, who are you? What are you doing? Uh, my name is Ginny. I'm a public affairs consultant as my day job, but I also um, I write op-eds, I do media interviews, and I talk about all different kinds of cultural stuff, conservative stuff, politics stuff. Uh, and so this is kind of, I like being at these things because it's all my friends and my network and I get to talk about that kind of stuff. Uh, how many of these have there been? Because this is my first, but is it a relatively new? No, it's not relatively new. It's new, it's, there's a new iteration. So it used to be called the Manning Center after Preston Manning. It's not Peyton Manning. Not Peyton bada Manning. Bing, bada boom, okay. No, it did not used to be a football conference. <laughs> It used to be named after Preston Manning, and it was the like reform movement kind of, and post Preston Manning, a way to bring conservatives together. Um, I think especially in Ottawa to bring Western conservatives to Ottawa, because sometimes Ottawa gets di disconnected from that populist Western Canadian conservatism. Uh, Preston Manning's gotten older; he's kind of moved on. It's been renamed the Canada Strong and Free Network, and I think look, there's a lot of people here. I think this is the biggest it's ever been, and I think it's because the Conservative Party is really popular right now, and so this is, I think, a reflection of that. And now, so what do you do um, when you come here? Like, you you have a a, a foundation we were discussing before. So I um, a lot of my clients are here. Um, so I do I, I help my clients get meet people and network and that sort of thing. But I also was on a panel earlier, uh, about a couple hours ago. We were talking about birth rates and child care and like family policy, which is an interest area of mine. Uh, and it was great. It was a good panel. We got some good feedback. The word of the day now, and I've been highlighting the fact that Canada has been talking about doubling its population through immigration. Uh, by the end of the century. Yeah. The last article that I read was now seems to be Trudeau saying we got to get immigration under control because it's becoming oh, out of control. He's had an epiphany. Uh, what's, so what is the situation? I mean, not to be politically incorrect, I got off the airplane. I, I At least at the airport, I, I presume it's uh, the place where you'll notice it the most or maybe you'll get a, a disproportionate representation. Is there is there uh, something of a demographic shift, a meaningful demographic shift happening in real time in Canada? Well, Canada has always had a gradual demographic shift, which I think we've liked. I mean, to to slowly integrate, meaningfully integrate immigrants into Canada has always been part of our history. I mean, we were a really big landmass, and we had to slowly add lots of people over time. But the key word is slowly, right? People can integrate when you are. Slowly adding a few, you know, a certain number of people every year, and they learn about Canada, they learn about what it means to be Canadian, and they choose to enter our society. But in the last few years, we've seen immigration just shoot up in a really sort of uncontrolled way. And I think that starts to mess with the equ equilibrium. You get people who don't, who aren't being um, uh, brought into our culture, who also there aren't enough housing for, uh, there's not enough supply of anything for, there's not enough uh, health care, uh, which we're all paying our taxes to subsidize. And so finally, the prime minister's had an epiphany uh, and said, oh, maybe we should slow down, maybe we should let so many people in. But I think it's interesting because it's kind of breaking up the consensus in Canada uh, around immigration, which for years was was immigration's good and now people are starting to go like maybe not so much so fast and at the same time what we talked about earlier today is our birth rates are plummeting 
so people are not having kid, enough kids and enough babies to replace the population. Uh, is birth rate plummeting because of, uh, uh, not to draw everything into political issues, but is it because of access to abortion or is it not, is it plummeting because people are just not having kids? It's, people are just not having kids, but they're getting, mar they're, they're dating less, they're getting married less, they're actually having less sex, which is wild. Um, and they're having fewer kids. And if you ask women, like there's a survey that was done recently, like very strong re piece of research, women will tell you when they're once they're in their 40s and 50s that they wish they'd had more kids, but they just started too late. They, and so I think it's cultural more than it is political. I think it's sort of like, we don't have a very child-friendly culture. We don't have a culture that says like, it's a good thing to start a family and have lots of kids. So in yeah, in fact, mean, we discourage it, I think. You have a culture which uh, focuses on abortion as opposed to uh, growing the population through natural Yeah, yeah. Natural I, I mean, our prime minister, I just like one of his recent announcements was to make birth control free. Um, and so it's like birth control is free, child care, a very specific type of child care from sort of like cradle to, to school is subsidized, heavily subsidized. And the, the I think the message, the subtle message is kids are an inconvenience. You should avoid having them. And if you do, you should put them in child, you know, government funded child care in a sort of one size fits all way. And I think that hurts that that, that hurts society and the fabric of what, society. Um, if I may ask, what city do you live in? I live in Toronto. You live in Toronto. All right. And now it's not a very kid friendly city, that's for sure. Well, it, and the cost of living is such that it's virtually not impossible. impossible. It's it's very, very difficult. It's very one, difficult. In my neighborhood in Toronto, it, the houses are incredibly expensive. Yet, having said that, there are still quite a few families in my neighborhood because it's like one of the few places in Toronto where you could kind of get into the housing market a few years ago. But now, because we have a safe injection site, so-called, in our a cons consumption site, I don't even like to call it safe injection site because the idea that drugs can be safe is crazy to me. Um, and so you've got like regular parents, normie type people, like not conservatives, starting to go like, this is insane. My kids are like, the, a kid picked up a fentanyl patch in a schoolyard. Like it's, not, this it's, is not a kid friendly culture. I, I'm a, um, everybody watching knows I'm morbidly neurotic. Like I pick up a piece of trash and I'm worried it might be laced with with, um, with fentanyl. I'm gonna like die from picking up garbage. Right. But um, I was in, Mont in Montreal a, a decade ago when we were gonna buy a condo up on the plateau, needles in the backyard. Yep. I mean, that, that was bad 10 years ago. Yeah. How has it gotten in Toronto? I take the streetcar to work every day. I would say once a week, there's someone smoking some kind of crack or whatever it is um, on the streetcar in the middle, like nine nine a.m. in the morning. Um, um, and so I think it's this like there's no there's no police presence. People feel like they can live with impunity. There's no deterrence. There's like no sense of public safety. Well, I, I, I part participated in enabling a certain video to go viral, which was uh, Global News, a CTV, with the police constantly yes, saying, leave yes. your keys, leave your fobs at yes, your front door. Yes, yes, um, I mean, come on. I, I, I was, I was renting a car. What abdication of just like a basic justice it, system. It's, it's wild. I was renting a car yesterday. I posted this and then I deleted it because I don't think anybody could hear the audio. The guy at the Hertz was warning a client, yeah. when you park your car, box it in so nobody steals it. And if you park in a driveway, make sure there's a car behind you because in four or five seconds, it's gone. Because we all have to just accept the fact it's, it's reality. It has, it has gotten exponentially yeah. worse in Toronto? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Vancouver is really bad, too. I think Vancouver is probably worse because of the, probably the warm weather. Um, but Toronto is really bad. And um, so you come here for this yep. and you head back to Toronto. What do you do on a daily basis in terms of you, know, you represent clients who... Who do what? Like what, what type uh, we're, of clients? We're like communications and government relations consultants. So we help we help clients understand how government works. Um, we like we'll run campaigns for for clients who want to um, like mobilize their workers or mobilize their supply chain or something to tell a story and win an argument. So we campaign like we do politics every day. Very cool. Yeah. And the overall theme or conclusion of your panel was what? We need to grow the population the, naturally. Yeah, well, the theme of our panel, it was all women. And we all sort of said, stop like with the liberal feminism that tells us what we want. Let us choose. Let women choose what they want and make public policy that doesn't stand in the way of that. Like, get out of the way. Let women choose what they want. And ultimately, I think families will have more kids if you do that. Very cool. And uh, what happens now? I, I've never done this. What happens for the rest of the day? Do you go back to other there, conferences? Yeah, there are all kinds of other panels. I'll probably go check out a few more panels. There's like another organization is having like a little side conference. I'll go check that out. And I'll just like catch up with friends I haven't seen in a while. Fantastic. Ginny, is there anything you want to say before we, uh, before you No, that's enjoy it. The Thanks for having me. It's great to meet you. My, the, my, my pleasure as well. Did you, did you happen to see the panel that I attended this morning? I saw the second half of it. It was fun. It was, was like, it, it was you, you made it kind of feisty, which was great. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> but panels are the worst and everyone agrees, you know, just like they just sit there and not I thought we were all, I, I think, I, I think we all, everybody, I will uh, link to that panel and I'm going to try to clip some highlights because, uh, I, I, not zingers. It was not a battle, but I think I, uh, stress to the world why defunding the CBC might be the solution and not 
sure. not another problem. Sure. Ginny, nice to meet you. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to text. We're going to get Alexa Lavoie from Rebel News. Let's see if I can get her over here. Whenever you can, come on, come on over, period. And until she gets here, people, what? So we're going to be bouncing between Canadian stuff and American stuff. I was on uh, Megyn Kelly with Phil Holloway just before this, from noon to 1.15, and we talked about a number of the American issues. There's another shooting that they're trying to make into the next race-baiting uh, fabrication of the election cycle. Uh, an individual who allegedly it seems right now open fire on police officers at a traffic stop whether or not he had any business to be stopped in the first place secondary issue open fire and then was killed in the subsequent shootout where cops fired 96 rounds in 41 seconds and um it seems that some of the race baiters and the race hustlers out there are already trying to turn this into the next george floyd of 2024 so we talked about that but that's not what i want to talk about alex jones uh, I was going to play the video, but I can't hear the audio. I'm sure you've all seen the video. It's a seven and a half minute video. It's an amazing thing, by the way. You know, uh, courage is contagious. So is corruption. But there seems to be another outlet out there that's running sort of James O'Keefe-esque undercover stings. And I've never heard of the news outlet before. And it's not a, a, a question of their insignificance or anything like that. But it's a new voice and it's a new uh, entity that I've never heard of. Gets an undercover video always seems to be uh, courting people in dates, like honeypotting, and I don't know what the deal is, but bottom line, undercover with an FBI or CIA, uh, an FBI uh, employee, who is basically admitting, and I put admitting in quotes, because you can't admit to knowledge you don't have, you could be falsely boasting, you could be exaggerating, but if you are disclosing information you do in fact have, and have a reason to have had, uh, then it's called an admission. This guy is admitting that the lawfare against Alex Jones was an orchestrated effort that wasn't uh, carried out by the FBI, but that was nudged. They just, I mean, I'm saying nudged in quotes because that's what the guy said, nudged. And um, it always seems to be on these dates when these guys think they're gonna, I don't know, get lucky with their date. <laughs> no judgment, uh, but loose links, loose lips, Loose lips sink ships, <laughs> among other things. <laughs> anyway, bottom line, this guy spills all the beans to what he thought was his date, I guess. And um, says how it was an orchestrated effort. They basically went shopping for plaintiffs and they found plaintiffs. And it was coordinated, politicized lawfare against Alex Jones. Now, Barnes did a bourbon with Barnes, Robert Barnes. And it was either last night or the night before Geez, I'm going totally see now. Yesterday was a bit of a blur of a day, but Barnes talked about this. We've been talking about this for a long time. We all remember out of the blue, Alex Jones, who, except for the fact that he had a messy divorce a while back, had never been sued in his two and a half decades on the air. And then all of a sudden, 2017 to 2018 or 2016 to 2017, right after Trump gets elected, devastating Hillary Clinton, rocking the world as we knew it, Lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit on all fronts. Defamation, copyright infringement, all sorts of stuff. At the time, all of us just thought it was coordinated by, you know, the Clinton machine. Whether or not the FBI is just a, 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 an extension of the Clinton machine, the Clinton machine. And within a year, I don't know how many dozens of lawsuits against Alex Jones, to the point where they, you know, they, they bankrupted him. Uh, or at least he's in bankruptcy now. We'll see what happens with these... Hundred, what was it now? Uh, uh, Nine hundred million dollars in in Sandy Hook damages from the non-trial of a trial that he had in that kangaroo court of Texas and Connecticut. So, a lot of us already knew that this was lawfare in action, and certainly in retrospect, having seen what they did to Alex Jones, we can see how they're doing it mutatis mutandis to pick your target today. So this guy on a date thinks he's going to get lucky, spills the beans. It was all FBI's nudging. FBI's finding plaintiffs. We, we knew it. Whether or not this guy is a liar who's exaggerating information that he doesn't really have to impress a date that he's on, whether or not he's a guy with loose lips sinking ships, we know it. And it seems to be confirmed and it seems to be out there for everyone to see now. Um, but the undercover journalism that people are doing this, just wait until they're going to try to criminalize that. We've had this discussion on the uh, channel a lot as well. The uh, 
all party consent states basically criminalize this type of journalism. I don't know what state it was in. Uh, I kind of want to find the guy and have him on the channel now, but we'll see about it. Bottom line, that was one of the other big stories of the day. Seems to be confirmed. Whether or not the guy had no basis to say what he said, you would think that maybe someone in the FBI would repudiate his admissions. Alex Jones became the target, and they got what they wanted out of that lawfare. Uh, they haven't really shut him up, and the irony, as Barnes always remarks, is Jones would have been retired by now, but for what they did to him. But it's corrupt to the core. It's corruption all the way down. Except instead of tur it's not turtles all the way down, it's corruption all the way down. How are you doing? Good. Uh, we're we're live. Come come oh, say hi sure. to the world. Oh, amazing! Get getting on this mic. Oh, pleasure to meet you all. How you guys doing? <laughs> nice to meet you. Let's see again. Now hold on. I'm gonna see if um. So that's story number two. Now hold on a second. Let me go see what's going on in the chat here. See, this is great. I get to do this with my camera, and I'm seeing. Th oh, this is the box right here. It's very beautiful. I had on a guy. A guy on a plane beside me was a mafioso in Sicilian, Italian. All I could do was chuckle inside. Yeah, okay. Definitely not turtles. So we talked about uh, Alex Jones. We know it. They're saying it. And the more people try to discover the truth, the more it's going to come out. What else is going on? Oh my goodness. Uh, everyone heard Michael Avenatti do the interview on MSNBC with Ari. I forget his last name. I put out a, a, a tweet last night as i get down here and i'm sitting there eating dinner alone but it's alone because i got here at like 11 o'clock at night and i just wanted to eat dinner have a salad and go to bed i'm sitting there just like playing this out in my mind like i've been following all of these lawfare persecutions you know they did it to alex jones now they're doing it to trump and i it, it drives me nuts that people don't understand it that they don't see what's plain for everybody to see now hold on one second see if i can find this uh, tweet it'll be good for the graphic Dun, 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 dun. It's amazing to appreciate. Here we go. Can I bring this up? Oh, I can. I'm sitting there thinking, we witnessed what happened to Alex Jones, pulling plaintiffs out of the woodwork, getting him in front of kangaroo court show trials, finding corrupt partisan um, attack dogs to carry out the dirty work. And I'm thinking about Donald Trump. And you just, you just go, we saw the debacle that happened in Georgia. Fonnie Willis, Nathan Wade, not exactly the stellar role models that they purport to be. Fannie Willis thinks that she's a role model for black women across the country. She's the face of the feminist movement. She's an adulterer. And I say that not without judgment. I say that without too much judgment. I've, we've all, if you practice law long enough, at some point in time, you deal with people who have affairs. And more often than not, it's not a one-way street. And more often than not, it's not cut and dry, good versus evil. Someone's being neglected. Someone needs to seek out affirmation somewhere else, whatever. So I say it with a, 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 a pinch of salt of judgment. She's not a role model for anybody. An adulterer, a perjurer, and uh, an overall corrupt hack who campaigns off uh, prosecuting an individual, gets elected, and does it. That's Fannie Willis. Nathan Wade, I judge hiding assets from his wife in the context of a divorce, also a liar, uh, a, a, you know, a, a useful idiot, and that's just two of them out of Georgia. Then you look at Judge Engeron, corrupt, judicially corrupt, out of New York, it, maybe even a bit of a pervert sending topless pictures to an alumni website, whatever. Then you look at Leticia James, corrupt as well. Then you get into the other, the really nitty gritty. You got a porn star, a convicted perjurer and a convicted extortionist who are the main players in the hush money payment uh, prosecution that looks like it's going to go to trial on Monday. Who else we got? We got porn star Stormy Daniels, perjurer Michael Cohen, extortionist Michael Avenatti, adulterer Fannie Willis, fraudster Nathan Wade, nipple judge Engeron, corrupt judge Juan Marchand, Crazy old lady who fabricates rape stories, names her, oh, she doesn't, in my humble opinion, fabricates rape stories, has rape fantasies. Just go watch her interview with um, CIA man there himself. What's his name? Anderson Cooper. Has rape fantasies and names her cat Vagina T Fireball. She's the main player in the uh, another one of the lawfare persecutions of Trump. Her lawyer, Kaplan, worked to change the law. 
that enabled E. Jean Carroll to sue. Uh, who else we got there? Jack Smith, prosecutor of D.C., plausibly accused of extortion schemes out east or out in you know, the international community. And who else we got there? Alvin Bragg, corrupt Soros fund. These are the players in the lawfare that we're witnessing against Donald Trump, and people just don't understand it. I was like, oh, I mean, if this were a story, if this were a Jean Le Carré novel, it would be too absurd for anybody to believe. And this is what is going on to Trump right now. Another man, like Alex Jones, who'd been in the business for decades plus, never had a problem until he ran against the Democrat machine. Didn't even have a problem until 2023, when all of a sudden, his business dealings came under attack and came under scrutiny and became criminalized. It's an amazing thing, but you, you look at that cast of characters and you think we're living in idiocracy. That was a long-winded way of saying Michael Avenatti, the convicted extortionist, the convicted uh, money thief who stole $300,000 from Stormy Daniels, does an interview with Ari, I forget his name, it doesn't matter, in which he's basically saying, even this Alvin Bragg prosecution of Trump in New York is going too far. You know, the, the, he's basically saying this might have been ripe in 2018, but right now it looks like what it is, political persecution. The, who, are the, who are the storytellers going to be in this prosecution? The porn star or the convicted perjurer? Which, which one's going to tell the story that a jury is going to have to believe? And the, the gross thing is, you know, Michael Avenatti might be a liar, but he's not dumb. Michael Cohen might be both a liar and dumb, but Avenatti's got a brain on his shoulders. The only problem is, I've said this before, intelligence without a moral compass is a weapon, not a tool. So Avenatti, it's not for lack of intelligence that he's in the problems that he's in, it's for lack of something else. But bottom line, I find myself agreeing with Avenatti. He says, who's gonna tell this story? The porn star or the convicted perjurer? He still says, and I agree with him, Trump will get convicted in New York because it's New York. Dude, it's all politics now. Michael Sussman can get acquitted in D.C. despite being dead to rights. He's the one who said that he did not, what would, that did not lie to the FBI when he said when he met with the FBI to pass them the Steele dossier that he wasn't doing it for his client, that being Hillary Clinton and the DNC. Everybody remember that? Sussman? Sus, man. That's what he said. That's what he lied to the FBI. And the evidence that they had was that Sussman not only met with the FBI for and on behalf of his client, Hillary Clinton and the DNC, he billed Hillary Clinton and the DNC for the very meeting in which he slipped that steel dossier to the FBI, acquitted in D.C. because it's politics. Political corruption. Oh, Alex Lavoie. Um, hold on one second. One second. I'm going to finish this thought before I... Oh, so all that to say, I'm listening to Avenatti, and the dude is actually making a little bit of sense, but he's got... Uh, certainly some skin in the game where he's got to make it out to be now that Trump is not going to get a fair uh, trial in New York as a defendant because criminal defendants don't get fair shakes, obviously taking that position to attempt to exonerate himself. You know, he didn't get a fair shake because criminal defendants don't get a fair shake. I think Michael Avenatti was dead to rights. Whether or not he got too harsh of a punishment for political reasons, that's a separate discussion. He pleaded, he admitted to everything, and now he can't come out and assert his innocence uh, as he did not do in the interview. But bottom line, even, even the criminal fraudsters are now coming out and saying it's gone a little too far. Um, but the bottom line, we'll see. He's, if this trial goes down in New York, Trump will get convicted. Uh, there is going to be the legal question as to whether or not you can have a state prosecuting what is effectively a federal crime for, for um, election interference. Uh, and that's going to be something that's not going to be left to a juror. That's going to be something that the Court of Appeals is going to have to deal with. But uh, that's it. Listening to Avenatti makes sense on the internet is not something I had on a bingo card for 2024. Now, where did Alexa go? Alexa! We're going to get Alexa Lavoie back here in a second. For those of you who don't know who that was, that was Alexa Lavoie, Rebel News Media. Oh, but before she comes, before she comes. Hold on. Stop screen. Before she comes, people, we're going to do the second sponsor of the day. Another one that I wish I had up in Canada, but I didn't have it up in Canada. Hold on. Show the screen for the wellness company. Here it is, people. Uh, and just because I can't uh, remember this one. This is... A, the, so the well, they'll remember this. Uh, we can't get this up in Canada. When the poo-poo hit the fan and everything shut down for COVID, I, you know, we, we, we have a family that has certain medications that you need. 
And then once you realize that these medications are made uh, in countries which A, might be responsible for the pandemic, but B, might be hostile, you no longer um, feel so confident about your access to medications. Did you know that on March 21st, the FDA was ordered to basically delete those tweets or take down those tweets where they were um, demonizing uh, ivermectin? You're not a cow, you're not a horse. Come on, y'all, just stop it. Uh, it's an amazing thing now, by the way, that just backtrack. After all the damage is done, Fauci lied, FDA lied, CDC lied, and people died. Um, but this is it. Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have to just read the script because I can't. I can't. I can't. I can remember all of it, but I don't want to screw up any of the wording here. Oh, and the wellness company has a, a medical package that's been designed uh, by McCullough and others. And the question is this, when the, when the next pandemic hits, whenever the next excuse hits, how do you get your ivermectin, your hydroxychloroquine, your medications that you need? You go to the wellness company and they have basically, it's a very super fancy, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Those things that you have, a medical aid thing, you know, like the, uh, uh, those little packages and they're going to have stuff in it. Americans are waking up and understanding that now more than ever. We need the life-saving medications and we need to have them on hand. They aren't just remedies, they are lifelines because there will be a next time and the wellness company's contagion emergency kit, that's what I mean, a Medicare, a medical kit. Uh, they've designed something amazing. It's, it's, the only one of its kind, this prescription kit provides you with a carefully selected assortment of effective medications for COVID-19 and other respiratory illnesses, ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, z pack this one I was like, budesonide, uh, and nebulizers, and a guidebook on safe use. Backed by research and endorsed by world-renowned experts, the wellness company's contagion emergency kit is a must-have. Avoid the chaos, avoid the price gouging, and be prepared for the next time the government makes you... <laughs> shuts down businesses if you go to the wellness at twc.health forward slash viva t tango whiskey charlie dot health forward slash viva grab your emergency kit uh you get 30 bucks off your fur off a checkout kits are only available in the usa so canadians um tough noogies and uh only get it here so the link to there is is uh in the description as well let me see where alexa went where did you go question mark smiley face we got to talk to Alexa Lavoie, because for those of you who don't know, uh, David Menzies was just arrested again for journalism up in Canada. Alexa Lavoie, for those of you who don't know, has been with Rebel News for a while. She's the one who got shot in the leg, point blank, by, uh, if it wasn't RCMP officers, it was um, some form of militarized police that Justin Trudeau brought down with a fist of fury on the most peaceful protest you'd ever seen. Oh, hold on, I got to take the... Uh, Hold on, I got to, am I, is this me now live? That is my hand. Okay, good. I thought I forgot to bring in, uh, hold on, let me refresh here. Reload site, is this going to do anything? Hold on, if you can see me, I'm going to see if my computer is, uh, is working. Enter studio. Uh-oh, I'm back. Okay, good. So let's see what we got here. See, I wish I, next time I said this, I'm going to go like this so I can read the chat. <sighs> Maple syrup, they are taking the legal guns. Oh, we're talking about the guns. So society cannot revolt when the veil finally hits. Liberalism is a mental disorder and should be treated as a crime. Oh, Sir, yeah, oh, Yan, come in here. You want to say hi? Yan, Parisian people. Who are saying hi to? The world right there. Give Yan. Tell the world who you are. My name is Yan. I'm a photographer. Uh, we ran a lot of circles during the convoy, uh, Rolling Thunder. And so we're trying to get his headshot. Oh, geez, that's right. And uh, he's a busy man. We might, we, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a beautiful portrait by the end of the day. So You hanging around? Yeah. And okay. my plug is Yan Brand. Well, you got to say, say that louder. Yan Brand, Y A N B R A N D. Have you seen Alexa? Yes. Can you ask her? Oh, Can good. Ask her right now. Um, I, it's up to you. No, get here, get here, get here. We're live. Go sit. What? what? Sit over there. We're live on. Okay. We're live okay. on the internet well, right the, now. Then what do we know? Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, going to interview some people. Well, you're um, now. You are the subject, Alexa. Um, yeah. Can we? Uh, are we going to be able to get the camera here? Okay, give it two seconds. Everybody, this is chaotic, <laughs> but this is fun. And I might, um, I might hit the streets of Ottawa, go walk up Parliament. It's rainy. It's dreary. It's not sunny and green. My wife is texting me and sending me pictures and I'm looking at her through the ring cam in Florida. I'm not saying I'm missing Florida, but I'm missing Florida <laughs> a little bit right now. 
Let me know when we're good to go. We're good? Okay, now. I'll, hold on, let me see. Alexa, I want to make sure. Okay, so you, the camera's going to bounce back when we're talking? Uh, Alexa, the world knows who you are. Certainly my audience does, but tell everybody what's going on, who you are, what you're doing here. So Pressure's on. I'm Do it. Go. Alex Hanabla <laughs> for Rebel News. And, no, I'm covering the uh, Canada Strong and Free Network Conference uh, as last year um, because it's very important to see our point of view. And I think uh, there is a lot of good discussion today, uh, especially on immigration, censorship and uh, pa parental rights. You were on the panel for I was on the censorship. Panel for censorship. Parental rights, you cover a lot of stuff out of Quebec. Yes. Okay, and yes. I forget what the bill was, but that was my one of my two red lines in the sand was when they amended the Youth Protection Act to eliminate parental supremacy as the overarching principle. Yeah, I remember I did interview you about it because yep. you were still in Quebec thinking to move away because one of the reasons was that bill. Um, but I think it is... Quebec, it's a little bit similar of what is going on in other provinces in Canada. And uh, I saw it just recently with uh, one of the lawyers of GCCF who is currently fighting along with the teacher. Because the teacher, according to the guide, the ministerial <laughs> guide, she would need to lie to the parents because the student wants to be called the other gender. I, so but, she, she, not, yeah. not that it was not a long shot of a prediction, but this is what I said when it came down to this removing the parental uh, authority or parental mm -hmm. supremacy. All it takes is a kid to say, I want a jab and I'm 13 and get DPG, uh, Département de la Protection de la Jeunesse, whatever they call yeah. it. Or say, uh, I'm, I'm transing. And if my parents say no, well, now an administrative body says what's in the best interest of the kids. So this is, this is actually happening now. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a, it's happening, and it's happening also for a teacher. Like teacher who doesn't want to lie to the parent can face like uh, being fired uh, as a teacher. Like uh, the thing is, which kind of teacher wants to hide important decision like that to the parent? I've got an answer: a groomer of a teacher. <laughs> if, if I may be politically incorrect, no, there's nobody in their right mind who thinks it would be their position to conceal that or withhold that from the parent, period. Yeah. So I did call to the civil director. So the civil director is the, the main body who, who you need to contact to change your name or change your civil um, civil status. status. Is that, is that the word? It might not be the word. Yeah. But. So if you want to change gender or names, you need to pass by them. But the thing is, a children who have 14 years old can change gender. But not their name. But not their name. It, it, for, and the rules, I mean, look, it's been a while since I've and practiced that without, law. without the consent of the parents. Yeah. They can change their gender, but they cannot change their name. Because it's, it's difficult to change your name. You have to have been, you have to have a good reason. You have to have used it for something like five years. And then you still have to get permission from the courts. Yeah. Uh, as far as I remember, and don't fact check me on that, people, but I think that's the law as far as I remember. No longer a practicing attorney in Quebec. Um, but you can change your gender just because it's because yeah. it's, it's in your head. But the thing is, how are you going to transition? Because, example, if a student is in, at school and now he changed gender, he wants to change his name too, but he cannot change his name without the par it's parental consent. So the thing is, now you impose to your teacher to change your name, not legally, but it's... It's, it's something that will lead no, so, to... So, socially is the word. Yes. And, but in fact, the children doesn't have the right to do it without the parental consent. It's, it's, I mean, for, for Americans that are watching, this, mm -hmm. is, this is ass backwards. For Californians, they're taking notes. New Yorker, Hochul's taking notes. Someone mentioned uh, a piece of legislation that might have just gotten passed yesterday, very recently, that would basically criminalize... Uh, Political harassment, like harassing yeah. politicians. Okay, yeah. I, I, so I know nothing. Someone said, I was like, well, holy shit, I'm in trouble now. I'm, I'm not going back to Quebec. Um, so wh what is it? Because they, they had like some mayor who went out to speak about like harassment and threat and other like kind of dangerous speech. And uh, every time that someone came and say, oh, this is bad, 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 bad. The government come and put either a law or it, 
it put like a, a restriction or maybe fines relating to this. Uh, actually, I have the article that I received from uh, my colleague and up to $1,500 to those that intimidate elected intimidate. officials. Okay, and what does that mean? That is really... Because uh, it, seems, it seems like I keep saying this, more laws, less justice. We already have laws against threats, harassment. What the hell does intimidating... What does it say? In, just intimidating. Here, up to $1,500 fine for those who intimidate elected officials. If I tell Justin Trudeau to go fuck himself, is that intimidation? I think it I, can I can't be, intimidate it, anybody. So, so the thing is, it's so oh, general. Yep. And it can be interpreted so differently by different people. Like, if I misgender someone, do I mean... Well, that's genocide. I, I think that falls under genocide. Under the, under <laughs> so the, I'm under, going to prison for life. Possibly, possibly. Possibly, You're yeah. a good person. Maybe they'll just give you five <laughs> yeah, years. <laughs> First, first time offense. <laughs> or or maybe if they think that I'm going to say something wrong, maybe I would be put in house arrest. We, 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 we talked about that briefly during the panel this morning where even the other panelists said that's that's a little bit too far. But there's some good stuff in there, you know, like um, uh, revenge, protecting revenge porn, which I thought was already illegal, but... But I think it's on the criminal code, no? I, I'm, I'm fairly certain it was as well. So when someone definitively shows me what laws are being uh, enacted that are not already you know, yeah. governed by the laws. So that that passed. That's now the law in Quebec? Um, actually, I will not certify that it okay. passed. I'm going to double check. So that's, that's I need to check. Um, but... I think my colleague told me that yes. No, but, but, but what, what past or not, that's where it's going. It's just it's it's a nanny yeah. state. It's it's a it's and a tyrannical anyway, nanny state. Anyway, we have a majority government, so everything that is putting in place, the government have the rights to decide. Since it's, I think it's seventy six percent. Yeah, well, because Charles will go. Not only did he not lose the last election after his tyranny, he gained more seats, and people haven't had enough of it yet. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, on another note, yeah. David Menzies arrested. Yes. Was he charged? So David Menzies was arrested. First time any of us have ever seen him without his hat. It was a horrifying experience. Mm -hmm. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, he was released, but was he ultimately charged? I don't think so. Okay, so they I would have known if he if was charged. Charges. But my, my concern, I, th I think it wasn't. But don't you know, take my word because sometimes for help for is, and then they, they let him go. It's been arrested twice, twice, like twice. It, the, the the last one was in a public uh, place, and it was the same cop, the same police officer that arrested the um, Iranian um, well, he's, refugee he, yeah, he's, that is he's, here. He's coming up. He's but coming it, up right after the, you. The, the, the same cop who actually arrested brutally both of them. It's wild. They, 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 we're going to speak with this uh, another man who was arrested. They just, you know, they, they're at protests. They arrest them, hold them for a few hours, let them go, don't press charges, yeah. uh, but effectively deny them the right to peacefully protest. It's, it's yeah. exactly what they did with the Tommy Robinson crowd. But out. David it, Menzies was not protesting. It was just asking questions. Like, it was doing journalism. So you remove, like, during the convoy, did they remove the state media that people were not really happy to see them there? No, nobody say, oh, we will remove you because you are creating tension and we will remove you for your safety. They never did that. But they did that with David Menzies. Well, what's, what's, what's what? <laughs> remove him for his safety? Yeah. Because other people would uh, threaten or assault him. Yeah. And instead of dealing with the criminals, you take out the victims, detain them, uh, and then you preserve the peace by bending the knee and bending over for the criminals. Exactly. So it's what happened. And, you know, when they remove them, they say, uh, this is for your safety. Like um, the peaceful protest uh, against uh, the carbon tax that took place since April 1st um, on the April 9th. So two days ago, I went all the way to the border between Ontario and Quebec. And they were there for eight days. And suddenly the Minister of Transport and uh, sustainable mobility came along with the SQ, the Sauté de Québec. Québec. Yeah. 
And so they say Quebec means Quebec security. You've been evicted for your safety. Yeah, leave leave now. And if you don't, then you get arrested. Arrest and fine. But the thing is, they are there since eight days. They were sleeping in their car. They they stay there the entire time. And suddenly, oh, for your safety after a week and more a week. No, now so, you are in danger. Look, be be glad they didn't invoke the emergencies act and come <laughs> down with, with with snipers on roofs. Amazing. And so yeah. what and uh, what else are you working on these days? So this day, I'm working a little bit on covering the main problems with the fishermen in Newfoundland, Labrador. What and are those problems? The quotas so the problems, on, on fishing. What I mainly understand is like they have a quota of uh, fishing, yeah. but the thing is now they cannot sell their catch outside of the province. So the people who wants to buy their catch, their fish, they need to pass by the government to be allowed to sell outside, and that actually destroy a little bit their profit and their income and 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 everything. Um, but there is the fishermen also uh, that have a problem in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, but it's different problem. There is the heel, heel uh, fishing, like the small fish, like it look like a long transparent heel. fish. Yeah. Heel, yeah. So the thing is, there is uh, criminal activity. So their catch is being taken away from them. They've been kidnapped. They've been um, um, some of them have like guns pointed of, of of them, and they want the fish because the fish is like gold. Um, they sell to Asia this fish. I think it's five thousand dollars per kilo or something like that. I don't know like the exact price of it, but this fish is really really expensive. And now you have like. A lot of illegal fishing that are operating, and uh, instead of uh, protecting the area, putting more security, ensuring that everything is going well, they just stop the uh, the, the fishermen to do their job. So they say that we close the season, we will not have any season. But the thing is, the illegal fishing will continue. Same if you say, oh, there is no fishing season. Do you think that we stop people? Well, see, the the problem with this with this story, Alexa, is that it, we couldn't get people mobilizing for being locked down in their own houses. You're, how do you get people to care about? I, I don't say this to be uh, mean. I'm. It's just cynical in a way. We, we couldn't get people to mobilize and care about being locked in their homes. People who are not on the island are not going to care about Newfoundland fishing until until it impacts them in a way. Until the food restrictions go into an area where it impacts them. Mm -hmm. Are you going to get to go to Newfoundland at least? Um, I don't know, but another big topic that I'm working on is the NGO or NGO organization. So they receive million to billion of dollars from government around the world, and those organizations, not all, but some of them are operating at the Darien Gap, one of the most dense forests where the Trans-America is cutting. Um, this forest is being crossed by thousands of illegal migrants per day. And so they are helping them, providing them map. They are helping them, providing them like health care, uh, all like the and goods that they and need. And redirecting them. And e EOM, are providing to women kits, raping kits, where you have the abortion pills, condom, um, or you call it like a uh, whistle, whistle yeah. um, and other like item like that, like a flashlight. So if they cross the Darien Gap, they can be raped more safely. Yeah, well, it's, it's, and it's us. We pay for that. It's all coming from taxpayer money. The last statistic I remember was that 80% of the women, and I might be wrong, but I don't think I am, 80% of the women who cross the Mexican border to America have been sexually assaulted or raped. Yeah, and most of them, it's in the Darien Gap. Darien Gap have uh, not only criminal, they have cartel, they have like uh, people who are really poor, they have uh, all kind of people who are just navigating in that forest just waiting for women or other people to cross because it and you can actually find dead body there because if you get injured you're gonna gonna probably die there nobody will carry you on and um, the, the the climate is really harsh and those NGO those organization are not only promoting but helping them 
And and now we have like currently almost an invasion in, in the southern border in the US where a lot of single men single like some children non-accompanied fighting age chinese men who uh, how, yeah. how how people are ending up how russians asians middle eastern people are ending up at the mexican border it makes one wonder and that that so-called border bill which limited it to 5000 illegal immigrants a day from contiguous borders didn't even include people who are obviously getting shipped to South America to cross the border illegally into, into America. And talking with border patrol, most of them have been processed in like 24, 48 hours. They receive a travel sheet. They don't have any ID, so any like card that can prove their identity. So with their um, travel sheet, they can take the flight and travel wherever they want into the US. They are free. And the people they think that they might not be receivable they will put them a bracelet to their ankle. And so afterward, they've been released until their court date that can take years to be processed. And some of them just disappear. They just disappear. And and now you have like a ton, like, don't ask yourself why the Chinese who wants to come and immigrate are passing by Darien Gap, all the way down to South America to go all the way up. Most of them are well educated and they are mostly single men in the middle age. So the thing is, who are those people? We have no time to check the background. We have no proof. And by the way, if they arrive with no ID, because most of them have no ID when they arrive, they need to believe them. So this is a, a lot of problem that we are facing right now. And uh, the thing is, it seems like, example, Justin Trudeau say recently, we have a really a big problem with temporary uh, resident and uh, illegal immigration. Just, While, just, just in time for yeah. a, an inevitable upcoming 2025 election, he's got to change the tune on pop on unpopular issues. But my, uh, but the minister of immigration say completely the opposite that we don't have a, like a, a problem an issue. So we have two people who are saying opposite things to actually miss direct the the canadian so people doesn't know who to believe well, if you say a and not a you're right a hundred percent of the time yeah exactly wild <laughs> alexa where do people find you um so ribbonnews.com of course uh, this is our main platform because the censorship is there and so you on this you can watch our report but of course we have youtube we have um, Rumble, and it's all Ribbon News channel. And of course, Twitter is my main account because I've been censored on Facebook. There is nothing that is going on on my Facebook. Uh, what I post is not being shared, it's not being seen uh, since I showed one of my interview in London. Um, my page is now uh, being labeled as uh, eight crimes and eight full speech. So I'm just like, okay, uh, so I can be jailed because I post that. I don't know maybe if the bill C63 passed, but it's been removed anywhere by Facebook, so I'm safe. <laughs> but um, so my Twitter account is The Voice Alexa because my the family name, Alexa. my family name is La Voix, La Voix, which means the, the voice, voice in French. <laughs> yeah. Alexa, amazing. <laughs> nice to see You're you again. The best. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the other gentleman, we may have lost him. the uh, you the, won. Guy, the guy who was arrested. Oh, I can Oh, you just down. Okay. I'm going to search it for you. Oh, uh, we are. Um, we're going to remove the mic from Alexa, and now we're going to see a man, another man who was arrested by the um, totally law-abiding, law-enforcing, law enforcement of Canada. It's what. The, all right, don't go for it. The uh, if you haven't seen the video, I don't know that we'll be able to show it now, but um, it's it, it, we're going to hear this man's story because I've been talking with. Uh, this man's from Iran. I was talking with someone from Venezuela who said, I saw you this morning and I thank you for saying what you said about, uh, you know, where countries descend into. We were talking about the laws in Canada, censorship laws, uh, hate crime laws, etc. And one of the statements made on the panel was, you know, well, compared to what's going on out there, we're on par with, you know, what's going on in the UK, what's going on elsewhere. And I'm like, we don't don't measure ourselves by where countries are going wrong. 
you know, the UK, they jailed Count Dankula for training his pug to do a Heil Hitler uh, salute. I don't think that that's right. I don't want to measure ourselves by the most repressive governments on earth. So <laughs> compare us to North Korea and say how good we are. Compare us to Venezuela and say that's where we're going. Compare us to Brazil to say if the laws keep getting passed at the rate they're getting passed here in five years, if that will be looking like Brazil, will they'll start threatening to jail employees of social media companies if they don't do the government bidding for them. So this is a man from Iran uh, who's got some um, cojones to do, what he's, to do what he's doing. There was a video that he posted where he was uh, being, I'll say violently assaulted. It's not the worst type of assault, but it's, it's violent assault, having a Canadian flag ripped out of his hands at a protest in Toronto and was recently arrested by the police, held for several hours during a protest and then released without charges. But right after he had been prevented, denied his alleged, I'll say alleged charter right in Canada of peaceful assembly. Well, let me know when we've got, um, are we good? Sir, so uh, we've never met until today. Have we, wait, did we meet before? Uh, I think that we saw each other during the convoy. Oh, that's right. Okay, so hold on. Come, at, yeah. um, at one of the protests. Yeah. What's your name? If you don't mind sharing it publicly. Okay, uh, I'm proud to share my name publicly. My name is Salman Sima. How do you say Sa Salman, S-A-L-M-A-N, S-I-M-A. Okay. Salman Sima. Yeah. Uh, born in Iran. Yes. How, what, when did you move from Iran to uh, Canada? I was born in Iran for my peaceful activity during the university and uh, uprising uh, in 2009. The regime arrested me several times. Uh, I was jailed by the hands of IRGC, tortured. They broke my ribs, one of my teeth. And long story, I did 200 strike. Finally, uh, I got released on the bail and uh, I escaped the country from the Turkey border. Uh, I seek asylum in Turkey to UNHCR. Then uh, after the process, uh, I came here in Canada 2011 as a refugee. And uh, I'm here. How old are you? Uh, 40. It's a good question. 40. 40. 40. 40 yeah. uh, born and raised in Iran. Are you, yeah. are you a family still in Iran? Yes, uh, my family is in Iran. How, um, I, I want to ask how they're getting treated uh, based on you having escaped. I presume the government knows so, this. Yeah, uh, my family, they receive a threat on a regular basis. And uh, I'm not going to go to the details, but uh, they uh, put uh, lots of pressure on my sisters. So you're born and raised, 40 years old, so you're born in 1984. 1983. 83, give or take, okay. Uh, you fled in 2011. Uh, I fled in 2010. Uh, around nine months I was in Turkey, then I arrived May 2011. In 2010, uh, all right. Now, you're born and raised. What is Iran like now versus what was it like when you were born? How has it changed over, over the decades? So... Over the decades, uh, the Islamic regime, uh, uh, they killed more people. They uh, jailed uh, more peaceful protesters. So I was lucky that I could uh, survive the torture and I uh, could uh, uh, seek asylum to Canada. So, But unfortunately, the number of executions went higher. And most, uh, I can say that... Uh, unimaginable that how Western countries appeasing with the Islamists and, for example, Justin Trudeau both to Islamic regime for an minister or, you know, these things uh, day by day, I understand that uh, the regime, uh, they have influence in Canada. Uh, what did you, so you, you left in, tw in 2010, give or take your... Yeah roughly 27 27 28 20, and so did you study in iran like yeah you... i was a study in uh, industrial engineering then uh, my master was uh, economics and uh, they banned uh, to finish my master and they didn't they kicked me out of the university and they didn't for what, like, re for what reason for if, if, if there, can be, pro, <laughs> if there for, can be a reason uh, for, for having unacceptable view <laughs> you know that for peacefully uh, protesting the against regime. Uh, we had a, a small student journal. We wrote about human rights, women's rights. 
So it's an Islamic regime. It's a dictatorship regime, and uh, and so you write you write about critical of the Islamic regime and the treatment of women. Yes, and, and then uh, we uh, mostly uh, I organize a protest against regime in university, and uh, this was the main reason. Um, and so you get arrested by the I the IRGC stands for the Iranian. Re no, uh, IRGC. Nothing is Iranian about IRGC. Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Even they proudly say that, no, we are not uh, uh, Iranian. Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Nothing uh, is uh, Iranian about IRGC, even in their name. Okay. When did they uh, either come into power or form as an entity? Uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, two, three years after the Islamic Revolution that happened in uh, 1979. Okay. Uh, the Red and uh, Green Alliance, uh, they uh, overthrew the uh, Shah government. Uh, we didn't have a democracy, but we had a, a good government uh, and uh, they throw the uh, they over uh, come to the, the previous government in Iran, and uh, with the help of uh, Jimmy Carter at that time, they established the Islamic regime in Iran in uh, 1979. Um, I mean, I, I've interviewed actually a, a few people, at least a couple, and I have some close friends who are from Iran who fled also. One was badly injured in a protest. But like, explain to people out there, like, growing up in this regime, one, one person I interviewed said, they had Western films, and if they got caught with Western films, jail, if not worse. What is it? What is it like on a daily basis living under that regime? So the first thing that the regime that one of the first thing they went uh, after the symbol. They went after the lion and sun flag. They went after the traditional uh, flag that uh, we have in Iran. So just. The, I'm not going to equate that. I said that, for example, Justin Trudeau is equal with that. But you can see the vibe. You can see the way. Having lion and sun flag in Iran is illegal. Having Canadian flag in Canada, waving Canadian flag Shut is not Shana good. Ball. Yeah. Then uh, the second thing, the regime confiscated the gun. They went to confiscate the gun. And we know that if the only power that has the gun is government, what going to happen? And after that, they start to control the people. For example, I have a friend that uh, he is lashed for the crime of holding the hands of uh, holding hands of his girlfriend and lashed, lashed just for uh, having the hand. And on, on, on the feet or on the back? Uh, no, just uh, uh, okay. on the beach. Okay, oh, no, on the back, on the yeah. back. Okay, so uh, drinking alcohol, illegal, lashed, jail. So, and uh, still they treat uh, very bad with the LGBTs, the execution, okay? So if uh, you have a, a sex before a marriage, marriage, it can be an execution. Have, have you, lots of things. You, you know the meme where it's like, right to jail. Overcooked yeah, the right fish, to jail. jail. Exactly. Undercooked the fish, jail. Right. This is like, hold a hand, jail. Jail. To, if um, you don't, uh, if you show up late to the dentist, jail. Yeah, that's <laughs> the famous video of Justin yeah. Trudeau. I remember that. Um, and so, you're you're living under this, and you decide to protest the regime, and it's just it's peaceful protests as small as a you know yeah. a dozen people holding up signs and saying what like why why do you do it if there's absolutely zero chance it can do anything other than get you in trouble? So, first of all. Uh, Al Ghul's day is created and established by the Islamic regime in Iran. Okay, Al Ghul's day rally is has been celebrating in Islamic regime. Okay, and I escaped that regime. Imagine that as a refugee, jail, lots of uh, trauma happened. Then you came to Canada, and you see that it's still some people are celebrating Al Ghul's Day rally. Okay. And the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, he promised in 2018 ban Al Ghul's Day rally. He couldn't or he didn't. Okay. So it's the Al Ghul's Day rally established by the Islamic regime in Iran. Al Ghul's Day rally. Okay. okay. So I wonder. 
jihadi anti-Semitic uh, Hamas sympathizer mob. They where, were, where is this being held? Uh, in, in April Trump? 6, April 6, in front of uh, U.S. Consulate University Avenue. I went there. It, that's that's in Toronto. In Toronto, okay. yes, in Toronto. So you go wearing. A I Canadian went there flag. with uh, with my friends. And who are my friends? Political prisoner from Iran. Uh, they are uh, students from Iran, and we know that we feel responsibility to peacefully counter protest that. Okay, we didn't break any law. We didn't do anything illegal. We were in a sidewalk. The video went viral. Everyone saw that. So, and uh, I had a Canadian law in my hand. What was the Canadian law? Hamas is a terrorist organization. And under Criminal Code of Canada, Hamas is listed as a terrorist organization. Okay. And I had a Canadian flag on my shoulder. Then a police officer aggressively came to remove me from the sidewalk. And he said, oh, you are uh, opposing danger. For uh, We are here to protect both sides. I said, that, thank you, but you admit that you are protecting the jihadists the who, uh, who, who, yeah, who are chanting genocidal against the Je Je Jewish people. Then police officer said that for your own safety. I said that, officer, I don't exchange my freedom for safety. Okay, so then they came, arrested me, and my shoulder was dislocated on December 23rd by the jihadists. So they purposefully twisted my shoulder and despite the fact that all of my friends and even me this shoulder is dislocated don't, uh, don't do that and they did it they arrested me in division uh, 52 they put me in a cell for how uh, long? Uh, five hours okay. okay and then come in and say then say free that to go? okay uh, free to go then i said that any charge they said that no charge then just i'm shocked i'm really shocked and uh, I am uh, talking uh, with good lawyers uh, to take a step to hold Toronto police accountable. Um, so you come to Canada. You've been here now since 2011. Yes. You've seen what can I mean, I, I don't recognize what Canada is today compared to what it was in 2011. Do you remember the first time you started thinking this is going sideways? Yeah, the first time that uh, I said no, it is not the can. Uh, it's not the Canada that I refuge in. Uh, it was the beginning of the COVID, and uh, if you remember, uh, we have a lack of vaccination and this thing. So then the mandate started. I said that. Oh, I came to a free country. Okay. I don't have an anti-vax view, and uh, I said, just uh, if anyone want to wax, wax, if doesn't. Uh, and then they said that, oh, government has the responsibility to protect the people. Government should do that. Government should do that. I said that, no, this is a communism. This is a, something that Islamic regime in Iran has been doing, and uh, I don't see a good way, and I don't see a good end for that. And Unfortunately, you can see that uh, how many human rights violations uh, happened uh, by the governments. So as a person that I have a libertarian view, but I want to be free. And it's not a good way that Canada is going to. Uh, you've been arre you've, you arrested once or twice? I arrested once. Okay. It was on uh, April 6th, and I released out of Okay, charge. and so no charges. It's not no like No charge, haven't... nothing. Um, and what do, you, what do you do in Canada now? Oh, I'm a math teacher. Okay, very nice. I'm a math teacher, yeah. So, and uh, I study economy and industrial engineering. Uh, I study uh, industrial engineering in Iran, and I... Uh, uh, finished economic uh, in York University. So I have a math knowledge and I teach math. Uh, the question I had is, this is going to be a, not a loaded question, but a political one. You've come from Iran. You come to America. We've seen in real time this debate go from the hijab is a, a symbol of oppression over women to in the West, the wearing the hijab is a sign of defiance of women or, or, or um, 
women's rights. Uh, the steel man of the argument is that a symbol in one country can mean something different than a symbol in another country. What is your position on having witnessed that debate in real time? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I personally identify myself as a Muslim and uh, I fast Ramadan, but uh, I saw the bravery of uh, Iranian girl, Iranian women that they burn, they scarf, they oppose to mandatory hijab, but I can never accept that uh, hijab is an empowerment. No, hijab is not an empowerment. And uh, hijab, not just mandatory hijab, is not just an uh, oppressing tool for the women. It's a disrespecting for the men. It's a disrespecting for the men, which means that we cover ourselves and men are such an animal that all of a sudden they're going to be... I don't know, horny, they cannot, they cannot control uh, their sense, so we cover ourselves. I find a hijab as a mandatory hijab as an uh, oppressing tool against women and disrespecting for the men. Uh, last question, you can choose to answer or not answer it. Okay. Do, you, uh, do you get threats from, your, from Muslim brethren for what you're saying and what you're doing? Uh, it's a, a usual thing. Uh, I receive uh, death threats several times from uh, IRGC talks in Toronto, uh, anonymous name, and I reported uh, three times to uh, North York Police Division 32. They didn't take it seriously, but they took it seriously. And uh, unfortunately, according to uh, Globe and Mail uh, report, at least we have a uh, 700 active agent of uh, IRGC in Canada, which in my uh, estimate is much more higher than this. So yes, I re receive uh, lots of death threat and uh, so, yeah. so keep uh, plugging yeah, on and protesting thank peacefully. <laughs> thank you, and I'm always peaceful. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you, Fantastic thank you, David. You. Nice to see you. Same. Uh, it's amazing. All right. Now, let me see what's going on here. People, we might be uh, winding up here. Let me see what's going on in the chat. Let me see what's going on in locals. Well, locals, I'm going to read these now, bring them up. I can't easily bring them up, but we got, let me go to the tipped chat up in locals. Power Cleric, $1 tip says, Viva, show the tech toy layout. How's the setup, camera, mic, et cetera? I'll show you that in a second, actually, Power Cleric. How do I? Okay, there we go. I got to go all the way down to the bottom here. Mr. Mike, Mr. Mike says, Viva Fry, Day 11, Arizona versus Rancher George Allen Kelly murder trial. Detective, I don't know what's the purpose of camouflages. Defense cross live streaming now. Prosecution should rest this week. Kelly residence site visit this afternoon. Juror site Q&A on Friday. And the channel that you're sending us to, Mr. Mike, Mr. Mike, crime on the record, Day 11. It's wild. I, I have not been following that trial at all to know what's going on with it. I started briefly following the uh, the river stabbing one, and I can't stand these. These stories make me sick because it's like moments of in the river stabbing, and I don't think anybody, I don't think anyone involved is evil, and I don't think anyone involved was a bad person or wanted it to happen, but you get drunk kids and a nervous adult, and then people act stupid, and then in a split moment, something irreversible happens, and there's no going back on it. Spam Rager, $5, says, proxy war, good or bad? Depends on Russia's intentions. If Russia intends to attack, then it's a good investment. If Russia genuinely just wants to be left alone, then it's a waste. Proxy war is how both sides did it in the Cold War. It's safer than a direct flight, a direct fight. Possibly, I mean, I, I've heard people raise the argument for um, the, uh, you know, Hitlerian global domination of Russia. Uh, but if if that's the, someone's belief, if that's someone's argument, and it's taken two years to come to a stalemate against Ukraine, that doesn't bode well for the idea that it's strategically feasible, let alone the actual plan for global dominance. In fact, all that I think is happening right now is you might not get a global war, but you're going to get an alliance between China and Iran, which we're seeing, which is going to be much more uh, impactful uh, and devastating as far as international relations go, or at least the West's uh, place in the world. <sighs> and now for the rest of the day, people, we're going to see what's going on in terms of...
Hold on. Did I miss any stories here? Share screen. I can put this back down here. Uh, Holly Doan. Okay. Oh, you know what? Here, hold on. Uh, okay, we won't do this. Canada, they got CIA. That's the video of the undercover. People, I think what's going to happen now is I'm going to wind this down and maybe do a Viva on the street and see what's going on outside. I haven't smelled fresh air today. Uh, and, that, and I might have to hit the treadmill as well because even when on the road, exercise is the number one thing. Let me go over to... Oh, King of Biltong's in the house. Okay, we got, okay, where'd you go, sir? Says Data Mind. I think that's when I knocked myself from the stream. King of Biltong, good afternoon from Anton's Meet and Eat. Free shipping for your Biltong USA code Viva on www.biltongusa.com and antonusa.com. Very interesting interviews today. Thank you for all your work, King of Biltong. Thank you very much. We got Wookiee48. Watch Dr. Dre episode from yesterday. Interesting interview. Explains COVID, trans, immigration, and everything crazy going on. Oh, Dr. Drew, not Dr. Dre. <laughs> Hold on. That's a rapper, right, Dr. Dre? Is, is Dr. Dre a rapper? Oh, he is. Okay. So Dr. Drew, I think is what you meant. Uh, although that's a very funny typo. And if I missed any of the super chats or the rumble rants, uh, Miss Scoozy. Oh, there's one here. Boom shakalaka. This one I can highlight. Fraser McBurney, Canadian 20. From time to time, I go out to the corner with my signs. The Canadian government failed us. Trudeau must go now. Here in Commie Hamilton, you would be surprised at how many beeps and waves I get. You should try it. It's fun. There is no question that more people than less are utterly fed up with the government and utterly fed up with the insanity. Not everybody has the um, intellectual freedom to vocalize it. It's a wonderful thing. Not having a boss works until it doesn't work. But not having a boss means you're not, you're not worried about pissing somebody off or losing your job. And so you have the freedom. And to the extent that you have the freedom to shout it loud and proud, you have the obligation to shout it loud and proud. So that's where it's at, everybody. I'm going to go see and mingle around and see if I can run into Pierre Poilier. If I had my questions, I was going to run into Boris Johnson, but he's not here anymore. I'll see if I can see Danielle Smith from uh, Alberta. Yeah, Danielle Smith is here. We'll see who's here. But you've got a flavor and a taste for some of the attendees, uh, some of the guests. I've never met them before, and I just meet them talking to them, and I say, I'm going live. Why not do this live? And so you've met them. People who have come from tyrannical regimes, they know what it smells like, they know what it looks like, and they know once you start losing control of that vehicle. Once you've been in a car accident, you know what it feels like when the tires start slipping on the wet roads. Uh, when you're not in an accident, my goodness, you think that car holds until it doesn't hold anymore. So everybody, I'm going to end it now. Uh, I'll probably try to go live very informally off my iPhone, but I'm going to go mingle, get some sound bites, some video bites, and uh, meet new people. Thank you all for being here. Next step on this journey is going to be Vegas for Barnes' 50th and then back home. So uh, what else? Thank the sponsors, uh, TWC.com health what is it all of the links are in there twc the wellness company uh support the sponsors they do great work and they also make great stuff field of greens amazing stuff everybody and uh what we do right now gonna go end this locals we're gonna i'm gonna do a locals i'm gonna do a specific locals exclusive later that's gonna be the walkie talkie pam walker three dollars here you go david the earth is still beautiful that is magnificent that looks like british columbia can we see this? We can see this. That looks like British Columbia time-lapse photo. So the water looks like cotton candy, and it's magnificent. Okay, we're going to end it, everybody. Locals, I'm going to see you in a bit. And um, I'd like to thank Rumble for, for uh, letting me use the studio. Now, back to Viva on the Street. Everybody, go enjoy the day. I will see you all soon. Peace out.